Morning, glory, America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. It's Friday, the 15th of January in the year of our Lord, 2021. This time next week, it'll be President Biden that I'll be talking about. But today I'm talking about President-elect Biden. He addressed the nation last night, and the headlines tell the story. Biden outlines $1.9 trillion spending package to combat virus and downturn, says the New York Times. Biden proposals 1.9 Biden proposes 1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package says the Wall Street Journal The Financial Times abroad Biden to push 1.9 trillion stimulus for pandemic battered US economy So that's what he's proposing Now the background for what I'm about to read are some facts Now facts are interesting things they're not often talked about but we should talk about them today. The total national debt, that means the amount of money that the United States federal government has borrowed and spent in excess of the amount of money the United States government has collected in taxes and revenues and fees. So it's their debt, like the credit card, is $27.8 trillion, All right, $27.8 trillion. The annual gross domestic product of the United States, that's the, the sum of all the stuff we make in the United States, is $21.2 trillion. That means our debt is 130% of our GDP. Now, you might say, is that good or bad? Let me ask you, if you, if you make $100,000 a year and you owe $130,000 total, on your credit cards and your, well, let me be more re realistic. If you make $100,000 a year and you owe $130,000 on your house, you're okay. All right? You're not great. Be better off to pay it off. But you're not out of sync with a 30-year commitment. If you make $100,000 and you owe $130,000 on your credit card, you're in big trouble. Now, the United States is somewhere between the first and the second example because the $27.8 trillion is mixed up of many, many, many debt instruments, <clears throat> some of which are due today and many of which are not due for 30 years. And it would be good to refinance the entire debt right now at low interest rates. But the problem is we can't sustain this. Here's what I really want you to hear. I told you the national debt is 27.8 trillion. In 1980, the national, and that's 130% of GDP. In 1980, the national debt was 35% of GDP. In 2009, when President Obama took office, the national debt was 12 trillion. In 2019, before the virus arrived, it was 22 trillion. So we are going to go from 22 trillion to 30 trillion in two years. The last year of Trump and the first year of Biden. <clears throat> and that's because of the virus. It's like World War II. It's a, it's a unique circumstance. The question is, how do we spend the money that President Biden wants to spend? And how do we address this debt? That's the number one issue for the GOP leaders uh, Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy to address in the Washington in the New York, in the Wall Street Journal this morning. Two fellows at Hoover, John Taylor, who's the world's smartest man, and John Coogan, who's very close to being the world's smartest man, the good economist, write the following: President-elect Biden is promising another round of federal checks to stimulate the economy. Jumping on the Biden wagon for two thousand dollar checks may be only the beginning. But history shows such spending does nothing to stimulate the economy. In the end, it only adds to the federal debt. Since the 1970s, one-time cash payments to individuals to stimulate the economic growth has been tried at least five times. Presidents Ford and Carter promised that their stimulus checks would restore economic growth by inducing higher consumption. More recent attempts by President Bush and President Obama were similar flops. Uh, One-time payments just don't work, America. They don't work. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't spend a lot of money on the pandemic. We should. 
The CARES Act was a massively successful effort to keep people employed by rescuing small businesses. What Coogan and Taylor write about is the necessity of avoiding short-run economic assistance except on humanitarian grounds, which is legit. I mean, people are hungry. They've, they've got to get food. We've got to do that. But the big debate in front of the country is if we're going to do phase five, and we're going to do phase five because President Biden won the election, President-elect Biden won the election, and he has the narrowest of majorities in both houses. This has to be bipartisan or it won't work. You need 60 votes in the Senate to pass this. Uh, the filibuster is not going to be repealed. Even though uh, Georgia Senate races both went to Democrats, it's 50-50. Uh, there are rules for a 50-50 Senate. Vice President Harris is going to be spending a lot of her time at the Senate. I expect Leader McConnell to do exactly what Leader Schumer did, which is slow everything down to a slow walk. But on this first action, there's got to be a compromise. Republicans want to spend money on getting people back to work by reopening business. And President-elect Biden says we need more testing not sure about that. I think testing is pretty easy to get right now. We do need uh, maybe some additional public health infrastructure because the states have messed up so badly the vaccine rollout. But I, I, I do not believe that this will go through unchanged, and it shouldn't go through unchanged. We have a legislative branch, and the legislative branch is going to is going to study it very, very, very carefully. The question is, when indeed will they get down to dealing with the most important thing? Now, the most important thing is how to spend the money and where to spend the money. I'm not going to talk a lot about the unconstitutional impeachment trial coming up. You know my opinion about that. I believe my opinion will hold sway. There aren't two-thirds votes to convict President Trump. So it's all a waste of time, in my view, when people ought to be focused on vaccinating, uh, uh, getting the vaccine rollout and on how to get the economy stood up again. The United States government and state governments shut down the economy that was the greatest economy in history. Now they're going to spend another round five of the, uh, I would call it stimulus. This really isn't stimulus. It, it's rescue. There are people who need rescue, people who were working, people who had good jobs. Uh, President-elect Biden also wants a federal minimum wage of $15 an hour. I think that is a mistake. I think it will destroy jobs for high school students and, and um, a lot of workers who don't warrant $15. I think they'll, more people will get more hours who are experienced. It, it's just a very bad thing for employment. But these are old, old arguments that we will continue to have in a 50-50 Congress. The 50-50 Congress. I mean, Nancy Pelosi can lose six votes, and, and the Republicans are going to win the Congress in 2022 after redistricting. Let's just get that through our heads. And there isn't going to be a repeal of the filibuster, so you need 60 votes to get anything through, so you got to pick up every Democrat plus 10 Republicans. Uh, even the most moderate Republicans, like Senator Collins and, and Senator Murkowski, are not in favor of hosing down the country with money for no good reason. Uh, and so there's a conversation ahead. What do you want the money to be spent on? Another big trend. And do you worry about this debt? I repeat the numbers that I want you. The national debt is $27.8 trillion. We pay interest on that. And when interest rates go up, we are going to face incredible inflation. They went up from 1.09 to 1.13 on the 10-year Treasury yesterday. And so uh, Birch Gold.